Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this is the first weekly wrap up of the new year of 2023. Suddenly, things that I had planned last year are feeling more real. For example, I had the great idea to offer to my job to do a public health readathon in April, and they said yes, they would love that. And this month they want me to present to the public health board about it. I was like, oh yeah, that, yes. <laughs> so I've been going through the prompts that I received from the different departments because it's no fun if I create everything myself. And I'm gonna do a mock-up of the bingo board uh, for my presentation. I haven't gotten info back from all the group, all the departments yet. Uh, the prompts are kind of based off of the like public health in general, but also like the services we provide, since every health department is different and has different services. Like even it's it's not state to state; it's county to county. The health departments are very different, so. I'm very excited, but now again, it's like, oh, hey, this is very, very real. So I'm glad that my workplace has many readers and they are tentatively interested. None of them know what a readathon is, so this will be fun. Jumping into my reading wrap up. I finished three things this week, and with the normal mood readerness, the first thing I finished was not anything on my radar, but it is something from my physical TBR, so I am okay. The first thing I finished was Chew Volume 1 by John Lehman and Rob Gilroy. I think Rob Gilroy is the artist. This was exactly as advertised. Uh, this is a graphic novel about a cop who when he eats something, he knows where it came from, he knows the manner in which the foods were prepared, and it makes eating not a lot of fun for him. But his talent goes even farther to if he eats a bit of flesh from a corpse, he knows how they died. He knows thoughts and things that the corpse knew. This is not for the weak stomachs because it grows gross, <laughs> but in a hilariously campy way at the same time. And I had a lot of fun with it. I passed it off to my husband not knowing what he would think, and he also had a lot of fun with it. I then read Vince in volume number one. This was on my 2000 to 2023 reading challenge and this is about a young man who is trying to get onto a school fencing team. He has the raw talent but not the training and discipline and he's competing against other young men. He's also the scholarship student so he has to get on the team or he loses his scholarship and his place at the school. Interestingly enough, the main character is not the one that is featured on this cover. I thought that was a very interesting choice to do. And then for the self-published science fiction contest, I finished Echoes of Another Earth by J. Daniel Layfield, and I enjoyed this. This is my type of science fiction. It did throw me because it, it starts off on a more serious note, and what it was promising at the beginning, it does deliver at the end, but it takes a very like roundabout way to get there. Um, once we meet the psych character Dave, it, it kind of goes the book. The book goes more like in a humorous sci-fi route, which very much surprised me. And I had to take a step back before jumping back in to enjoy reading it. And I'm gonna have a individual review coming up about this since this is one of the quarter finalists for my team. So those are the things that I finished. For what I am currently reading, I picked up The Souls of China, The Return of Religion After Mao by Ian Johnson, which is 
my nonfiction for the quarter. The, the way that this is written, if I continue reading like a chapter or two a day, I think I could be done actually this month. But I am slow reading this. This is written by a white Westerner, which had me kind of leery, even though that it in his bio in the back it says he lives in Beijing. But as I've been reading the first couple of stories, it greatly has reminded me of the stories I read in The Way Spring Arrives. So I believe this guy has done his research. I would suggest reading that short story collection before picking up something like this, just so then you get the flavor of the stories. And then when, as you're, like I said, as you're reading this, then things make more sense. Oh, that's why that was d done in that way. So yeah, I'm enjoying this. Like I said, it's written in more of a memoir style. So like each chapter he is talking about his interactions with someone who lives in Japan or someone who practices one of the religions. And then I picked up again Sisters of the Forsaken Stars. This was a novella that I had started last year. Um, it's on my currently reading Goodreads list so that I would remember to pick it up and finish it. I really, I, I read the first one last year, really enjoyed it, and then when I picked this up, there's a tonal shift, which makes sense. It's been time since the author had written the first one, and it's also been time since the events of the first book, but it kind of threw me, so I needed to step back and then come back to it. And so I'm planning on continuing this. And then I have started Trellis by Jules Cantor. It's another of the self-published science fiction contest books. And in this one, so far we have a dual perspective. We have Melody, who is a cop, and then we have Debbie, who is a mediator. Melody is investigating a murder that has happened inside of this building called the Trellis in, in Chicago. And Debbie has just been hired to work in the Trellis, so very much it's going to be, I think, the, the politics and the things that are going on in the trellis. Those three books that I'm currently reading, I'm going to continue this week. For my pile of possibilities of what I'll pick up when I finish one of those, well, I won't finish The Soul of China. That's, that's going to probably be all month. But after I finish the other two... After I finish the trellis, I am planning on picking up Melody by David Hoffer. This um, is like a psychological thriller sci-fi from what I understand. I only read like the first chapter because my, everybody else in my group had voted yes for this book, so I already knew that it was going to be on our list. I get, then when I finish Sisters of the Forsaken Stars, I think I'm going to next pick up Nebula Vibrations, which is another novella. It's very short, so that's kind of what I'm looking at next. Then for my 40 books before I turned 40, I have The Great Gatsby, also pretty short. And then some other books that I'm looking at, but not entirely sure if I'll pick up this week or not, would be Full Moon by Jim Butcher and Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This one is on a bingo board buddy read challenge, so I'm, I am more interested to pick this up. And then from that same buddy read group, they're buddy reading the second book in this series, and I'm like, I haven't read the first one yet, so I'm interested in picking up the first one. However, both of these also work for the key mark readathon that I have signed up to do. And there's the goal is to read five books in a month to get points. And so I'm thinking of making that reading challenge, like my Sunday read, since I have a little bit more time just to kind of hang out and then I can just focus on one book. So I might read one of those on Sundays and then I'll continue my other three during the week. I love it. Lots and lots of possibilities. So for my writing wrap-up, my monthly writing goal is to 
continue working on Theo's point of view and my exalted story. I did not write 10 minutes every day last, this past week. I wrote one day, but I wrote for a 40 minute sprint. So I was like, yeah, it, we wrote for a little bit longer. And it was a little bit hard to get back into the mindset of Theo and what was going on. At the end of November, I had did go through each scene and just kind of said, this is what's going on. So what I ended up doing is it, because I had said it has to end in this way. So I just wrote the ending of that scene and then I went back in and said, okay, what would logically get me there? And finally, words started flowing to the point that I wrote way more words than I thought I would have otherwise. So definitely I'm enjoying finding some like night sprints now that my part-time job, I can't work in nights. So going to continue working on that. Still need to figure out a short story thing that I'd like to write, but we will see. And then for my other media, I realized last week I forgot to mention that while my sister was visiting, she bought the game called The Crew, which is a cooperative card game. Uh, you have four suits and you have a, like a, actually you had five suits because one of the suits is a trump. Makes me very much think of like spades when you're, as you're trying to take tricks. And then there's a little story that goes along with each round as you're working together to make sure everybody completes their mission. And I had so much fun doing it. We finished up on the last day I got to see her while she was in the Kansas City area. And we were bound and determined we were gonna hit the, all 50, we were gonna finish the story. And my parents kept going, oh, it's okay if we don't finish. And me and my sister were like, no, we are finishing. Sit down, get this table. We are marathoning this game. So I had so much fun doing that. It, it's a game I'd like to play again. And I would su suggest for other people, this is a fun one. I know that we did the space version and I know that there is a submarine under the water version as well. So I'd be interested in playing that too. And then this week I am slowly still watching Andor and I am loving it. Like this story has great writing. My husband and I were looking at the writers for the project and looking at other things that they had done and we're like, oh no, we like the writers and the showrunners who have worked on this project. We like a lot of the other things that they have done. And then we went to look at some other shows that we had watched recently that we were more iffy on and we were like, oh, well these writers are completely new. They, they don't have a lot of back, you know, thing and they don't have a central they don't have a writer who has experience. So no wonder their stories are kind of eh, 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 because they, I think in a writer's room, you need that experience with the new enthusiasm for writing. That way you can craft an even story all the way through. And so, and we're great writing, also great acting and great cinematography. Nothing is wasted in this show and things from the very first episode will get addressed later on that you had thought was just going to be like a open story like look they, they tie it off they do visual cues for different things to foreshadow what's going to happen and yeah I am loving this and my husband's like well good and then he's trying to me about how long it's taken me to actually sit down and watch it but again I find sometimes that starting a new TV series takes more brain power than rewatching. Just like sometimes starting a new book takes more brain power than rereading. But I am really enjoying this. Once I finish Andor, I will go back to Willow and pick it back up again. My husband's watching that on his own and he has a, and the comments he's been sharing are more positive. I will continue with Willow as well in the future. So kind of what you can expect from me in the future. I have my favorite novels and novellas video coming out this next week. And then the week after will be my novelettes and short stories because I read a lot of those this year. Um, I also will have a 
dedicated review for Echoes of Another Earth coming up, as well as some other review videos from the books I read in twi from my new release series from 2022, things that I haven't reviewed yet that I still want to. For a question of the week, are you a mood reader? Or are you someone who plans your reads? I'd love to know. Thank you, and have a great day.